This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Tuesday, May 23rd. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. Culture Minister Stephen Lashley is moving to ensure there will be no disruptions to this year's crop over celebrations. Earlier this month, the Barbados Association of Masqueraders threatened to boycott the festival if they did not receive an increased subvention and prize money. At the time, the association's president, Chetwin Stewart, said members are at the end of their tether, and he said they made a significant contribution to the festival over the years, but apparently got nothing in return from government. Addressing a news conference yesterday, Minister Lashley announced a $50,000 increase in subvention and an additional $30,000 in prize money. Following talks with members of the association, Lashley said he thought their requests were reasonable and should not be ignored. But in the meantime, I felt that the requests of the masqueraders um, are sufficiently reasonable that I should not ignore that request. And I've agreed that uh, in relation to the subvention, that we will look at a reasonable uh, structure for an increase this year of the subvention and also for an increase in the price money. The NCF and the Barbados Association of Masqueraders will meet to look at the way in which the allocations will be made. But I can say to you that generally, in relation to the subvention, I've agreed to a $50,000 increase in relation to the subvention. And as you relate to the prize money, I've agreed that in this particular 2017 festival, that we will increase that by $30,000 for this year. Meanwhile, BAM President Chetwin Stewart says while they did not receive the amount they requested, it is a step in the right direction. Of course we're not satisfied, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, because the numbers, the numbers are relative, huh? I mean, you know, the budget for Grand Kaduma might be four hundred or something thousand dollars. That might sound like a lot, but uh, a band like Beige, a party band, the budget like that is four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it's for one band. So, you know, we we are happy that you know it's a step in the right direct direction, but there are a lot of other things that have to be looked at. And staying with news of crop over, there will be some changes to the crop over calendar this year. There will be no Cahobla pot for the third consecutive year, and there will be no king and queen of the crop. Culture Minister Stephen Lashley announced those changes, among several others, at his office at Sky Mall yesterday. The change in face of the sugarcane harvest has really um, come to the fore. Uh, much more mechanization, less labor intensive. And therefore, the whole question of the king and queen and the crop and persons who, how many, how many tons you cut and how much tons you load, has really been um, a part of that, that, um, that modernization. And the NCF is very actively having discussions on how we address this particular issue. I can say to you that the whole idea of having a king and queen of the crop, therefore, has now to be relooked. And the thinking now is that we will now, rather than having a, having a king and queen of the crop, we will move now to, to having a system of honors of those persons who are participants in the sugarcane uh, harvest. Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite says he plans to hold parents responsible for their children's violent behavior towards their peers and teachers. Brathwaite was responding to a recent viral video which showed a schoolgirl being beaten by a group of fellow students. He says he will revisit current laws to ensure that parents are held accountable for their children's behavior. There has been yet another delay in the hearing of the lawsuit brought against the state by former murder accused Frank Errol Gibson. This time, Gibson's lead attorney, Larry Smith, has objected to the legal representative for the Director of Public Prosecutions making oral submissions. Yesterday, Smith insisted that a formal application must be made as, according to him, written submissions were not enough. Gibson is claiming damages over $2 million in his lawsuit against the office of the DPP and the Attorney General, as well as Dr. Victor Eastmond, a principal witness in the murder case. He alleges he was wrongfully charged, imprisoned and prosecuted for the 2002 murder of Francine Bolden. After Gibson was charged and remanded, DPP Charles Leacock 
QC discontinued the case in 2012 on the grounds that there was insufficient evidence to make out a case beyond reasonable doubt. There's regional and international news after this short break. When it comes to your family, what do you dream of? Enjoying the sights of Italy, seeing the Eiffel Tower for the first time, or experiencing the cuisine of Spain? Courts can make your family dream come true. Shop at Courts for a chance to win a dream cruise for a family of four. Spend $999 or over at any court store or online at shopcourts.com. Every $100 gets you a chance to win that cruise to give you more fun time with your family by cruising the Mediterranean, a value of over $20,000. So stop dreaming and start shopping to make your dream come true at Courts, bringing value home. We're back now with news from the region. The new education minister in the Bahamas, Jeffrey Lloyd, has announced an audit of his ministry. The Ministry of Education gets one of the largest allocations in the budget, and Lloyd says there is need to find out how public funds are being spent. We get more from ZNS News. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, said the Free National Movement's policy of auditing government entities is all about transparency. His ministry has a $300 million budget, which includes salaries for thousands of teachers. Regarding the audit, he said it will be expanded. The audit covers every single thing. Um, we are looking, obviously, at the contractual relationship that the ministry and the department has with vendors or with consultants or with persons who are providing services for the ministry. We want to see and evaluate whether those contracts have been entered in with a view of providing the best opportunities and services and products that the ministry needs and uh, that they can use immediately. There are contracts for, um, are considered for the building of schools, upgrade or renovations of schools. We want to be sure that those dollars that are being spent are being spent wisely and intelligently and are getting for the Bahamian people the value that they deserve. Some have reportedly termed the move as a witch hunt, but Minister Lloyd denied that. Of course, not a witch hunt. The Bahamian people have put us here so that they can expect from us an effective and efficient and proficient management of the affairs of this country. And on the international scene, at least 19 people have died and several others injured in a suspected terror attack in Manchester, UK. Police were called in to reports of an explosion at the venue following a pop concert by the US singer Ariana Grande. The cause of the blast was unknown but authorities were reportedly treating it as a possible terrorist incident. That's news this morning. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Or you can tune into Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Mara Claire Williams. Have a good morning.